Judgment in the appeal of PST Energy and OW Bunker. Lord Mance will explain the judgment of the court. The basic issue on this appeal is whether the owners of the vessel Ray's Cogitans should pay for bunkers which they ordered from OW Bunker Malta Limited, OWB, and which were supplied to the vessel in November 2014 in the Black Sea. The bunkers were supplied on 60 days credit with a reservation of title, but with permission to use them in the vessel's propulsion from the moment of delivery. The bulkers were in fact all consumed in this way without the owners ever paying for them. OWB had obtained the bunkers from its parent company, OW Bunker and Trading AS, which in turn obtained them from Rosneft Marine UK Limited, RMUK, which obtained them from its associate, RN Bunker Limited, RNB, in each case again subject to a reservation of title until payment. Shortly after OWB's parent had supplied the bunkers to OWB, which had in turn been supplied to the vessel, uh, the parent became insolvent. It is in these circumstances uh, that the owners have never paid anyone. The only payment has been by RMUK to the ultimate supplier, uh, its associate RNB. At one point, RMUK demanded payment from the owners of the vessel direct, asserting that it retained title in the bunkers. The owners commenced an arbitration against OWB, claiming a declaration that they were not liable to pay OWB for the bunkers, because firstly, the contract was, they said, one of sale, and second, OWB was never in a position to pass title to the owners in accordance with Section 2.1 and Section 49 of the Sale of Goods Act 1979. The arbitrators held that the owners were liable, even though they could not and did not transfer property in the bunkers to the owners. Mr. Justice Mayles agreed, and the Court of Appeal dismissed an appeal by the owners. The Supreme Court unanimously dismisses the owners' further appeal. The leading judgment is given by myself, and all other justices agree with it. Essentially, there are three questions. First, was the contract one for sale within the meaning of Section 2.1 of the Sale of Goods Act? Second, if it was not, was it subject to any implied term that OWB would perform or had performed its obligation to its suppliers, in particular by paying for the bankers timiously? Third, if it was a contract of sale, does the Sale of Goods Act contemplate that a price may become payable in such circumstances without property ever passing? In particular, was the Court of Appeal right in F.G. Wilson Engineering against John Holt, the Caterpillar case in 2014, in saying that the Sale of Goods Act does not contemplate this. As to the first question, Section 2.1 of the Sale of Goods Act defines a contract of sale of goods as one by which the seller transfers or agrees to transfer the property in goods to the buyer for a money consideration called the price. The present contract contemplated use of the bunkers prior to any payment and without any passing of property. Therefore, it cannot not have been an agreement to transfer the property in the bunkers to the owners for a price under Section 2.1. It was a sui generis, unique agreement with two aspects. First, it permitted use prior to payment and without property ever passing. Second, as to any bunkers unconsumed at the time of any payment, if any were ever made, it contemplated transfer of the property in the bunkers remaining at that time in return for the owners paying the price for all the bunkers. But even if the contract were analysed as a contract of sale as regards any bunkers unused at payment, OWB could not owe any obligation to transfer property in bunkers used before payment and the contract would cease to be a contract of sale entirely if and when all such bunkers were, as here, consumed without any payment ever being made. As to the second question, the court holds that OWB's only implied undertaking as regards bunkers used in propulsion prior to payment was that OWB had the legal entitlement to permit such use. As to the third question, the Court of Appeal held in the Caterpillar case that where goods are agreed to be sold under a reservation of title, the seller cannot claim payment of the price 
because Section 49.1 of the Sale of Goods Act only contemplates such a claim where, first, the seller has transferred property with or without delivery, and second, the buyer has failed to pay the price due in respect of such transfer. While Section 49.2 contains only a limited exception to this general rule, the, Court of the, uh, the Supreme Court holds, however, that although there needs to be caution about recognizing claims to the price of goods outside the scope of these two provisions, there is, is at least some room, room for such claims. For instance, the price may be recovered of goods not yet delivered, which remain the seller's property, but which are at the buyer's risk and are destroyed by perils of the sea or by fire. The present situation would be an even stronger example since here the bunkers were destroyed by use in propulsion by the owners themselves with OWB's permission. Had the contract between OWB and the owners been one of sale, the Supreme Court would therefore have held, overruling the Caterpillar case to this extent, that the agreed price was recoverable in the present case, notwithstanding Section 49. 